To my regular viewers, welcome. It's lovely to see you again. And to my new viewers, welcome. And I'm so glad you could join us. We are off for a few days to Parak de Hoge Veluwe in Otterlo. We were regular visitors here to this national park, but over recent years we have sought our recreation elsewhere. But this time we would like to just revisit and reacquaint ourselves with the beauty of the area. So um, come along and enjoy the ride. There are various accommodation facilities um, in and around the park and we stayed in a one bedroom unit which had all the comforts of home. It was time to visit the park. Parak de Hogeveluwe was established by the businessman Anton Kruller and his wife Helene Kruller Miller as a private estate in 1909. Up until 1923, the park was under construction with wildlife being imported and the building of the hunting lodge and fences. Helen Kruller Miller was an art collector and work had become on a museum inside the park. Due to the worsening economic conditions, the building of the museum was halted and the couple found themselves unable to keep the estate. In 1935, the art collection was donated to the state of the Netherlands, which then continued to build the Krilla Miller Museum. The park was handed over to a foundation, which received a loan from the state. And at the time, the estate became the second national park in the Netherlands. Well, we walked and we bite. And all oh, those pizzas were delicious. <coughs> the weather today is dry and with a chilly breeze. We'll be roaming around Hochschuren, developed in the early Middle Ages. By 1840, it was home to 191 people. And in 1863, the land was added to Crown Land, which limited the further development of the village. Willem III of Orange intended to build his palace in Hochschule, but changed his mind and bought Palace Hedlow, a 1684 palace in Apeldoorn. The art house is a former hunting chalet of King Willem III near Hochschule on the Veluwe in the province of Gelderland. It is located on top of the Aartmansberg and in 1972 Queen Juliana had an information centre set up there about nature and wildlife and her successors continue with this responsibility. And not only is there an information centre, but restaurant food is delicious. Having enjoyed a lovely lunch, off we sit. We would like to visit, or should I say revisit, Radio Kootwijk. But first, there was a shepherd and his sheep and goats to visit. And we saw the first lamb born of the season. It was very informative. The shepherd was only too pleased to tell us all about his duties, which he performed in the park, keeping the sheep. Radio Kodwijk is a former transmitter park on the Veluwe, which in the first half of the 20th century formed an important communication link between the Netherlands and its former colonies, especially the Dutch Indies. It was built from 1918 onwards. Houses were also built for employees, which together formed the village of the same name. On February the 28th, 1928, 
a radio telephone connection was established using shortwave and for this purpose three buildings were erected for a much smaller shortwave transmitters on the Hochbühlos Heath, approximately one and a half kilometres southeast of the old transmitter. On January the 7th, 1929, the radio telephone service was officially opened to the public by Queen Mother Emma of the head office of the then telecommunications. After this event, the words, Hello Bandung, Hear the Hague, became legendary. And from that moment on, the Dutch public could call the East Indies. While editing and being annoyed that I didn't have any other photos of uh, the radio station, I thought I'm sure that we've been to this park before, we have actually on many occasions, and so I looked up some of my older photos taken with my Canon camera. So um, that was just lucky. So here are some of the missing links. We had a wonderful day this particular day in 2009. And at the end of it, while we're biking back to uh, our homestay where we were at the time, we just had an amazing meeting with the inhabitants of this park. Now it was just a long shot and it was unexpected and I had to quickly grab for my camera. But oh, what a lovely experience was this beautiful ending to a perfect day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And uh, if you have and you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. And I'd love to hear from you. So leave me a comment and have a wonderful day.